What's up? What's up, everybody? How are we feeling today? How are we doing today? How is everything going today? It's a new year. It's 2023. And so we get to start the year off on the right note. A little musical pun there. On the right note by modeling up the SolidWorks bass guitar uh, that we see behind me with this beautiful lens flare. This beautiful red bass guitar that we've got behind us. Uh, very excited to get into it with everybody today. I think today what we're going to do is we're going to continue talking about the contouring on this bass guitar. Uh, and what I mean by the contouring is the uh, area here and the area here. Well, there's a similar area of contouring on the bottom side of the bass guitar. So we're going to uh, we're going to check that out. Well, let me get the the chat here in the other window. There we go. Cool. Yeah, so this contouring that we've got here on the bass guitar, we want to make sure that uh, that is also being reflected on the bottom of the bass guitar. Right now, the bottom you can see is just a sharp running around the, uh, the outside of the bass guitar here. Uh, we want to make sure that that same contouring or similar contouring is on the bottom. So we're going to go through, we're going to focus on that today, do some surfacing to get that contouring on the bottom. And, uh, and then we are, uh, time permitting, going to start getting into creating the pocket on the bottom of the bass guitar for all the electronics. So let me just grab the, the body here real quick. What's up, relaxing music? What's up, Robert? What's up, Tambor Station? What's up, Richard? Shout out to everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hope everything sounds good. Let me know if anything sounds out of line, if the music's too loud or too quiet, if the microphone is too loud or too quiet. Let me know, but I've been doing some testing. I think I finally got this thing figured out. <laughs> Feeling pretty good about uh, everything right now, so hopefully uh, it's sounding pretty good, too. So... Here we can see the bass guitar. Um, the electronics cabinet in the back of the bass guitar has a potentiometer here, a pot, which is our uh, volume control. So this upper one here, there's a knobby on the front that controls the volume. And then this is a three-way switch on the back here. So let me flip this thing over so you can see both of those. So we got the potentiometer uh, for the volume control here, makes it louder or quieter by letting more or less resistance through. And then we've got our three-way switch here, which is basically letting us run the pickup in parallel uh, or or sing it's like single coil, double coil, or both. I think that's what it is. I don't actually understand what this switch is doing when there's only one single pickup here, but I think that's what it is. I think it's doing single coil, double coil, both. Basically, it is a way of controlling the tone of the the bass guitar so sometimes you want to play songs where the tone is more uh like mid to high end where it really cuts through the mix so you would you know throw the switch in one position for that and sometimes you want it to be fuller a little bit um almost muddier uh but muddy is really not a positive usually uh but it's kind of like vintage uh a little bit thicker a little bit more low -y end and then you can switch the switch for that and then if you want kind of like a balance of the two you can go in the middle um, it just has to do with the fact that uh, different songs sound better when your tone is different. I mean, it's really what it comes down to. Otherwise, every single guitar, electric guitar, would sound the same. Every single bass would sound the same. But that is not the case. When you have, like, something really slappy, uh, poppy, you know, that's going to have more mid and high end. Uh, when you have something a little bit more old school, a little bit more funky, or a little bit more, uh, like... Uh, like Jackson 5, uh, James Jamerson that was the bass player in that band. It's a little bit more, I don't want to say muddy, but uh, a lot of times in the in the old days what people would do is they would take a sponge and they would put the sponge here underneath the strings and that would give the strings a little bit of a different tone, a little bit uh, less uh, sustain and a little, just a little bit more uh, intentional, intentionally. Uh, it, it sounds muddy to me, but it's like muddy in a cool, good way. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it better than that. Anyhow, that's the electronics on the back. And then those electronics get run into uh, two different locations. Uh, the, the first one, the obvious one, is they get run to the pickup. Uh, so the, the cable here is running across uh, through, the, through the body of the guitar and right here into the pickup. These are just magnetic uh, coils that pick up the sound. And uh, basically, it's like a microphone. Um, and then there's a second line here that a lot of people don't know about if they don't get into music uh, right here. 
And what that line is doing is it's actually going to the bridge and it functions as a, a ground, believe it or not. And it really helps with buzz um, and uh, grounding issues. Uh, so you run that into the bridge to give yourself a nice ground as well with the electronics. It's all very low voltage, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh, it does help with buzz and extra noise and stuff like that. So if we, when we take the bridge off, we'll see that there's actually a ground wire that is sometimes soldered to the bridge. Sometimes it's just laying in most of the bases I've worked on. It's just laying in a pocket and like touching the bridge. So we'll see what happens. And then the, uh, the other wires that are here, those are going out here to uh, the output jack. So you plug a, a cable into that on this end, and then you plug a cable into your amplifier, and then you get your output. Very simple. Uh, I've seen bases that have, you know, five, six different knobbies on them. Um, I've owned and worked on bases that have a battery pack in the back here that uh, you actually can get a true equalizer on the bass guitar. So you have like, usually you have three channels on that equalizer. You have bass, mid, and high and you can really dial in your sound by adjusting those just like you would do with a you know like a slider eq or an eq on a um, stereo head so i've seen bases that are way more complicated but this one's very simple so what we're going to focus on today uh what we did last year hard to believe we're in a new year here but what we did last year was during the live stream we went through we created this contouring here this contouring here then i reflected on that work and i said you know what i think we could do it a little bit better and so i made a short video posted that video a lot of you saw that video uh, explaining maybe a better way to approach that challenge i also in that video did the uh, surfacing cut to get this little scalloped area up here so now today what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing but on the back side so on the back side, we've got these same kind of uh, scallop cups up top here. And we've also got a giant scallop cut here. Okay, so giant scallop cut here. And then we've got uh, two kind of smaller, there's a, there's a hard edge here. Let's see if I can get the lighting good so you can see this. Yeah, there's a hard edge right here. And there is a hard edge right here. You can see this one really clear because of the lighting. Um, and then there's a, uh, an additional scallop cut here that runs around almost to the uh, electronics cavity. And then we've got another scallop cut here. So we've got the same, basically the same four that we had on the front side, but then we've got an additional very large scallop cut here that we'll deal with at the end. So I think the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be very similar to what we did on the front side. You know, on the front side, we had this one that ran all the way around and up to the horn. And on the back, we have, you know, a very similar scenario where we, we're starting out up here on the horn and we're coming down. And if you could imagine, that's probably connecting here. This is probably all one continuous pass. And then there's an additional cut that cuts out this region here. In fact, if this was done with manual machining, that's almost certainly how they would do it. Uh, but this is probably CNC, so, you know, they probably probably do it all a little bit more elegantly. Um, and, uh, and then we've got our scallop cut over on this side, which we can just do with the two uh, loft profiles, our scallop cut up top with two loft profiles, our scallop cut up top with two loft profiles. So I think it's going to go pretty smooth since we already did a very similar process on the, on the front side. Um, I don't know if it's, it really does look like it, it's almost mirrored. And so maybe for the sake of time, I'll reuse some of those uh, profile sketches and just do a convert entities to uh, allow us to uh, create, you know, the, the geometry on the front here, this scallop, we flip around to the back. It's almost identical to the geometry on the back here. So I could probably just reuse that guide curve on the front and the back just to save a little time. Um, and of course, we could modify it later if we, uh, if we wanted to make it unique on the back compared to the front. Um, I think that's, you know, it's a good game plan. We got a good game plan here. So let's get into it. Let's let's try to create some of this geometry uh, for these lofted profiles here that we're gonna go through and create in today's live stream. Uh, so let me flip over to our keyboard and mouse cam. A lot of people were asking about the mouse cam in uh, chat and in the uh, comments. You know, the mouse cam, I just wanted so that when I left click, you guys can see that it's on the left side of the screen. And then if I right click, you guys can see that it's on the right side of the screen. If you want me to, I'll change it so it's not mirrored anymore. But uh, I think that, you know, this is what it looks like if I was 
you know, like looking in a mirror <laughs> almost. Uh, so, you know, I can mirror that back if that'll make more sense for you. But I think it makes sense that this is the left click, this is the right click. So uh, that's that's why I set it up that way. All right, Nico Concarne is in the chat. What's up, Nico Concarne? Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so what we did on uh, last year, so cool to be able to say that last year, was we created these images of the bass guitar and we dropped these images in. Um, so we've got an image here from the top, looking down on the top of the bass guitar. We've got an image here looking in from the side. We've got an image here looking up from the bottom. We've got an image here looking in from the other side. And we've got an image here looking down from the top. So we've got these uh, five, six images of the bass guitar. We've also got an image from the rear. Uh, looks like I haven't actually dropped that onto the model yet. So let me do that now. So select a face, begin a sketch, orient the view, uh, tools, sketch tools. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create an image uh, on a new plane. And the reason I'm doing this is because then I can reorder it to the top of the tree. So I'm going to create an image here just by dragging a plane down uh, to... I'll make this the same thickness as the body. I know I could create a dynamic relationship there, but again, what my goal here is is to... Uh, make this so that I can reorder this independent of some of this uh, this other geometry here. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to be able to quickly hide and show all this geometry or even suppress, unsuppress, you know, I just make it a little bit easier for me to do that. So 1.779 is the distance. So I'll take the top plane here and drag this down 1.779. And then I will actually I'll just go a smidge further. So I'll go 1.78, uh, just a smidge further. Uh, and then I will be able to reorder this up to this top section here. And I can call this plane or bottom of base body. And then on that plane, I can begin a sketch, get normal two here. Whoops. Do a barrel roll. Uh, let's it go. Tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And we're going to bring in the red base giveaway here. And we're going to bring in the photos of base. And we will do base body rear only. All righty. And we can drag that into place. I like to go over here to full image and set the transparency for the full image so that it's a little bit easier to see through and that way I can line up that image with the, the rest of the bass guitar. I uncheck the option for enable scale tool and then I'm going to drag this into place. So just kind of resizing, you know, I took the time to make sure that it was oriented correctly when I was um, uh, dropping this thing into my photo editor. So really the only thing I need to do here now is resize it so that it matches uh, with the, you know, essentially it's matching to the image that we did from the front. So it should be pretty close, you know, certainly close enough for us to use for our guide curves when we're creating our, you know, our, our scalloping uh, geometry for this thing. So should be pretty close already, but we're just going to get it nice and nice and perfect there. And then we're going to bring this up and we'll drop this into that same folder and we'll call this one image uh, bottom of base body. All right, excellent. So now we've got all our images in one place here. We've got a nice plane that we can sketch upon to create the geometry for this scalloping process. And like I said, it, it looks to me like this geometry here from the the view uh, of the uh, the... the um, the bottom here there's there's kind of a hard line right here a hard break and there's a hard break here as well i'm gonna assume that this whole loft can be done in one cut that kind of like follows around the body like so very similar to what we did on the top so i'm just gonna attempt to uh reuse that i could probably even do a mirror and mirror that surface body but i'm gonna do it again just because we didn't really get a chance to do this in the live stream with the multi-feature approach so we're gonna do this together now in the live stream so that everybody can see this with the kind of multi-feature approach that i did in the video uh last week <laughs> so uh in the tree over here i've got you know, most of this geometry that I used for the top scalloping. So I'm going to do add to new folder and I'll call this uh, contour. 
uh, two, three, four top. And that way, you know, all the contours that are related to the top of the model uh, are in that folder. And then I can kind of start to focus on creating the contours for the bottom of the model, uh, you know, using these next few features here. So what I did with the approach that I did last week was I started out by actually looking at this thing from the top, kind of looking down in from where the, the neck is. And I used that view to help me establish the, the contour at the beginning of the bass guitar. And what I mean by that is I went to this face here, select face, begin a sketch, orient your view. And uh, once I'm looking down in on this thing from the, the top, um, and I think, wait, hold on one second. Let me just make sure. I think I might have to mirror one of these images. Let's think about this for a second. The cavity is going to be, yeah, these are, this is backwards. This image that I just dropped in is backwards. So let's edit that image. And you double click on the image. And then you've got an option here in the image command for mirror. So we can just mirror that. Um, in my experience, I've had those images get a little bit uh, kind of wonky if you, when you do mirror it, once you do mirror it. So just, you know, for what it's worth, just be aware. Um, but there we go. That's mirrored. And now what I actually have to do is take that to the bottom of the tree because I want to be able to see uh, the, the geometry while I'm editing the image just to kind of make sure that it's still in line. So we'll take this image here. And because the image is transparent, we can see the, the rest of the base body there and kind of get that into place. Yeah, that's what we want. Because we want this larger contour here and this larger contour over here. Okay, good deal. Sorry, guys, don't mean to get you motion sickness. It's, uh, just don't like the way this is lining up here. Sometimes we have to um, account for, you know, deformation that takes place due to perspective. So we uncheck that option for lock aspect ratio, and then we can kind of drag it into place a little bit, depending on what kind of a reference we have to work from. Like in this case, we have the reference of the, uh, you know, the existing geometry that's kind of driven from the, the front view image. And so we're just kind of using that and doing our best. I know I'm going to be scalloping this thing out. It almost looks like I need a ro slight rotation on this, huh? Yeah, that looks better. That slight rotation. I like this song. Still need a little more rotation here, maybe. I think I'm just gonna split the difference and call it. Okay. All right. So feeling pretty good about the image from the bottom of the base now. Now we can go into this view orientation and we can say that we want to create a sketch on this plane, which is up above the bass guitar. So it's this plane here, which is now up above the bass guitar. And then on that plane, what we're going to do is basically just sketch this contour here, which for all intents and purposes can be a straight line. Uh, it doesn't need to be the, uh, you know, the, it doesn't need to be anything more fancy than that. It can just be a straight line here. So we could go here to the edge of the bass guitar uh, body, we'd go here, you know, just hide this sketch plane. So that we can pick up on the relationship to the base body itself there we go and then we're going to use the command curves projected curve so curve projected curve let's exit that sketch curve projected curve and we're going to project that onto this face here and we don't quite want to wrap around like that and so what we might consider doing here is actually putting the curve 
uh, below that point of tangency. And so what I mean is, instead of creating it on this plane that's kind of up above the bass guitar, we could create a new plane here. So we could go, let's say, for example, to the top plane, hold control, drag. So I'm holding control and dragging that plane down. And then just create a plane around here. Let's say it's at 20 inches. And then we could take that sketch, reorder. I'm reordering in the tree down at the bottom of the tree here. Uh, so it's now below that sketch plane. And then I could right mouse button, edit sketch plane, and drop it onto this sketch plane that's running right through that section of the base. And what that does for me is it sets me up so that when I do my curve projected, I can project it onto this surface here, reverse projection. You see now it's only going, you know, in that direction. So it's just kind of a way of uh, limiting the influence of that curve uh, so that it doesn't actually project along that entire edge because I'm going to be doing the next section of this uh, of this scalloping here from uh, you know from this next section of the bass guitar. So I don't need that you know to wrap around any more than that. And then from here, what we could do is we could maybe do just a little bit of revising of that sketch. Um, so if we go into our our view here, looking uh, looking down on this thing from from this view, we could maybe do just a little bit of revising. Like maybe it doesn't need to go quite that deep. Maybe it doesn't need to come in quite that far. You know, this is something that you just have to kind of eyeball up and and use your knowledge of the project to make your best decisions here as far as how to proceed. But I think that's pretty good. I think I'll leave it like that for now and move on to my side view of this thing. So I could maybe hide this image from the bottom, hide this image from the top here, and then take an image from side one and show that. And then I could go to that plane from side one and begin a sketch. Let's get normal to that sketch plane. There we go. And now you can see kind of how the scalloping from the bottom is going to be uh, matched up to what I did here with this curve already. So in other words, I can begin a spline here and kind of line that spline up to that existing curve and use that spline to come across uh, the rest of the base body here. Now, there is a giant scallop that's taking place through the whole thing, so I'm not going to worry too much about uh, that middle section yet because I'm going to do that with a secondary curve. But I'm going to go through here and create something like this. This is very similar to what I did last week. And now that I've got that geometry in place, I'm going to go to the command uh, curves, projected curve, and project that onto this surface here. And we end up with a little bit of extra geometry up here, but it's not connected. And we're going to do a, a fit spline to kind of merge those two together. So, you know, I think that looks good like so. One little trick here with the fit spline, if I go to sketch, 3D sketch, and then tools, spline tools, fit spline what will happen is when I go to fit spline uh, from here to here I'm basically tracing over that region with a with a spline so I'm tracing over this region here with a spline but you'll notice here that where this where the spline is making that jump it gets a little bit wrinkly you get this little uh, like it kind of had a, a weird wrinkle there so the, the the things you can do to the main thing you can do to mitigate that is just to have more of a gap where the the um, jump is taking place so in other words we've got our original projected curve that we created over here and now we've got our fit spine that we're gonna you know that we're gonna uh i'm sorry our, our second projected curve that we're gonna drop in here well if we give ourselves just a little bit more of a gap there maybe uh you know make this thing so that it's it's horizontal um you could even maybe do a convert entities of this geometry into a 3d sketch and then that would give you an endpoint that you could reference here and you could make those two endpoints horizontal you know those are all things that are going to help when you go to do your fit spline but the biggest thing is if you just kind of increase your gap a little bit that'll definitely help with the fit spline being less wrinkled so if we if we repeat that same exercise here where we go sketches 3d sketch and then we go tools spline tools fit spline tools spline tools fit spline one of my favorite commands uh, this is not going to be a closed spline. So a closed spline will try to loop back on itself. 
something like that, where it'll try to it'll try to create a closed contour. That's not what we want. So we uncheck that option for closed spline. And then we can go from here to here. And you can see when it jumps that gap, it's going to be a little smoother now because we just gave it a little bit more runway. And we also took a little more care of aligning the uh, uh, horizontal location. So if you enjoy that tip on fit splines, be sure to uh, hit the like button. Uh, always try to remind you guys to hit the like button when you're watching these live streams. It definitely helps with the algorithm. Uh, and Fitspline is one of my favorites and definitely deserves a like uh, because Fitspline is so powerful and because it can jump gaps. A lot of people don't realize that Fitspline can jump gaps. So Fitspline is what's up and uh, we're going to be using that, but we're not quite ready for it yet. So I'm going to delete that Fitspline, uh, exit out of that sketch. And now you can see that I've got part one and part two of this scallop of the body. And so now we're ready to move on to part three of this scallop of the body. So we're going to hide that image from the side and we're going to show the image from the um, I guess it would be base from bottom for contours so we'll show that image down there we'll go onto that plane begin a sketch orient our view and we will once again you know this, this is basically just rinse and repeat uh, we've heard me say that before but uh, I'm gonna be creating a spline here that goes from around this location down to around this location where it's actually touching the top of the bass guitar um, doesn't really need to be any more fancy than that, but maybe I'll start out by making it a little more horizontal just to give the fit spline a chance to, to transition into that. In fact, we can add relationships to our splines, so I could even make it officially horizontal. And uh, now we can utilize the command curve projected. So we go features curve projected curve and project that onto this face and this face reverse projection so it's going the correct direction we get a lot of extra little crap up here from that projected curve but that's not going to affect us at all so let's see here oops spoke too soon it did affect us yuck so what do we do i'm going to control z to undo and i'm going to take the uh, top plane and hold control and drag and kind of just drop that in the middle here so i can project it in the other direction i'm going to reorder the sketch so it's below that edit sketch plane Drop it onto that sketch plane there. And now when we go to do our projected curve, project curve, you can see here that we can project that curve onto this geometry and we don't have to worry about it going up and through the rest of the bass guitar. So that's quite the gap that I left myself with there uh, in order to get to that projected uh, location for the uh, fit spline. I think I'm gonna tidy that up a little bit. So I'm gonna say edit sketch and maybe I'll hide the earlier uh, projected curve so I'm not getting as confused it's just kind of hard to see where the end point is on this thing but uh, I think I can sort of see it better now so this needs to come over I don't want it to be coincident so is there let me see here what's the hot key to not get a relationship is it alt or shift or control okay there it is control so if I hold control see look now I'm not getting the relationship so I'm getting coincident I don't want it to be coincident so I can hold control and then I don't get that relationship. I just kind of want it to be in line with that thing sort of near the end. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So can, there's another another bonus tip that maybe uh, we didn't know about. Uh, we can hold control to avoid getting a sketch relationship. So now we're going to show this other curve that we had up top. And we're going to attempt to fit spine all three of those. Man, I do not like the uh, the way that this is lining up here. I need to I need to be able to clearly see where that point is. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll back before that curve, and I'm just going to do a sketch, 3D sketch, and I'm going to do um, I'm going to take this guy here and do a convert entities, and then I'm going to just take this end point and drag it over. Let's see, maybe I'll do a trim. Okay, there we go. What I'm doing there is I'm just trying to make it a little easier for me to see where that is when I uh, edit this sketch here from the bottom. It's just hard to see where it is. Yeah, see, look, see how much, how far off I am on this thing? So I really want it to be more down like this. Almost like that. Yeah, that looks much better. So we can exit that. Okay, and now we can just 
delete this. We don't need it anymore. We just were using that to get ourselves close. And now 3D sketch tools, spline tools, fit spline, and this guy, and this guy. See, look how, see how it's trying to like loop back on itself. That's because of closed spline being selected here. So you notice when I uncheck that, it doesn't do that anymore. So closed spline, you don't want that selected. And that guy there. Oh yeah, look at that, that looks great. That transition looks perfect. And this guy over here. Boom. Love it. Here we go, one single 3D sketch entity of one single spline. Very useful when you're attempting to loft or, or uh, sweep between surfaces to create surfaces. Very useful to just have one single, um, uh, one single entity. What's up, Steven Nids? Happy New Year. Thank you for the great content. Yes, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Tamperor Station agrees. This looks great. Yeah, I agree as well. All right, so now we can um, hide that image of the base from the bottom. And now we can maybe right mouse button on that sketch and say sketch color and make it something that's a little easier to see, like a cyan color here. And now we can go to our uh, top of the model here, or sorry, bottom of the model here, select face, begin a sketch, or I could even go to that image that I created, or that, that plane that I created, begin a sketch, show the image from the bottom, get normal two here, make you guys motion sick again. Wait, let's just figure this out so I just know what it is from now on. Is it control two? No. Control three? Control five? Control six. Oh, wow. And control six puts us upside down as well. Okay. Let's make a new name view. So I hit the space bar. Brings up this thing. I never have the view cube enabled. Um, this is something that's a little bit, it's newer and it's a little, I think it's a little cumbersome. So I never have that enabled. So I uncheck that option for view cube. Um, and I just press the space bar to bring up my view orientation. And then I'm going to make a new named view. Uh, and I will call this new named view. Give this thing a name here. I'll call this correct bottom. <laughs> So now, whenever I'm zooming around, if I just hit the space bar, I can choose correct bottom, and that takes us to what we want to be working on. Uh, so correct bottom, and now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spline that starts here at the same place as my other spline, and basically follows this uh, internal contour. So you want to remember that we want to do peaks and valleys. Now, for this one, um, we kind of lose the... Uh, the the edge to follow when when we've got that other scalloped area so we just have to kind of uh, uh, do our best to eyeball this up uh, and then get ourselves around to this final point over here so we're gonna have that larger scalloped section we're not gonna be able to follow that as we get into this region here but overall I think that that should look fine that should give us pretty close to what we want maybe I'll adjust this handle here just a little bit Yeah, something like that. It's probably fine. All right, and we can exit that as well. And now we are going to loft those two together and then see if we are able to successfully cut. Uh, so we'll go here to surfaces. We'll say lofted surface. We'll say we're going to loft from this geometry to this geometry. And that leaves us with this shape, that little contour shape there. And then we're going to use that contour shape to cut the main body. So I picked the surface that we just created from the tree here. Pick the surface here from the tree. And then I do cut with surface and make sure it's cutting in the correct direction. I don't know if it is. Let's see here. Cutting in the correct direction. Okay. And it says operation failed due to geometric condition. And we had this happen uh, last week. And if you remember, we did a little fillet on the model first and then attempted to do that cut after we filleted it and tried to see if we had any better results and then if that still didn't work we took the we took that surface and we did an extend so we'll go extend surface here and we'll say 0 0.090 just a very small extend on that wow it looks crazy I don't think that's right Wow, we're getting a really crazy result there. Um, let's take... 
it's interesting. We have all these edges here that are kind of uh, going crazy. Hmm. I don't like that too much. So th what this means usually is that you're getting into some uh, some somewhat of a weird curvature situation. Um, there's a couple of ways we can resolve this. One way that we could resolve it would be to uh, just make the geometry that we're projecting to a little bit larger. Um, this is something that we didn't talk about last year when we were working on this project, but it's a different approach that I think is worth bringing up here uh, because I've, I've definitely used this before with success. And so what I mean by that is instead of uh, these two sketches, you know, coming together uh, exactly at their endpoints and exactly on the bass guitar, what we could do is before we create start creating those projected curves, we could go to these two faces here and we could use the command surface offset and we could offset that a small distance, let's say uh, 90 thou. So you can see that what we're doing here is we're just we're projecting that surface outward or we're offsetting that surface outward. Even that's probably a little too much. Let's say 50 thou. Um, I think that's that's probably plenty. So we just took the entire bass guitar and then we created uh, uh, a copy of the bass guitar that's a little bit outside of the solid body of the bass guitar. And if you remember, when we were working with that plane that's on the bottom of the bass guitar, we kind of did the same thing. We have this plane here that's a little bit uh, offset from the bottom of the bass guitar. We can even take that a little further. Let's say we went 1.8. So now we've got a, a small gap there uh, between the bass guitar and the the sketch plane for our loft geometry. And we've got a small gap between the bass guitar and the curve that we're gonna be using for our loft geometry. So now we go to this plane three where we created our, our uh, geometry for the projected curve and then we get into this projected curve here. Well now, instead of projecting it onto the body of the bass guitar, we're gonna project it onto this, this uh, surface that is slightly outside of the boundary of the bass guitar. Slightly outside of the boundary of the bass guitar. And then we're going to uh, move forward to our second curve and we're going to do the same thing. Instead of having that curve land on the body of the bass guitar, we're going to have it land slightly outside the bass guitar, you know, by projecting it onto that projected, uh, sorry, uh, offset surface that we created. And then we're going to go down to this third curve. And again, instead of projecting that onto the faces of the bass guitar, we're gonna project that onto this new surface that we created that's slightly outside the boundary of the bass guitar. And so now when we move forward to our surface loft, uh, we're going to edit this sketch here. And, and you know, sometimes lofts work a little bit better when they're not exactly connected so maybe when we go to create the end point of this loft here we leave a little gap between the loft and our projected curve um you know our our uh, uh this guy here that we created actually you know what our our 3d sketch is a little bit off here so let's edit that 3d sketch our fit spline got a little bit out of line i think when we moved everything onto that new geometry it uh it didn't like that so that's all right we'll just do another tools, spline tools, fit spline. And now we'll pick this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. And we'll say not closed. All right, that looks good. Now our other sketch, like I said before, we could maybe say it's not gonna be perfectly on you know, there's going to be a little bit of a transitional area, so it'll be four-sided instead of two-sided. It's another thing to look out for with lofts is that a lot of times uh, lofts don't like to terminate at a single point. They prefer to have um, a little bit of an additional edge here. Four-sided surface is usually a lot better than a two-sided surface where things are terminating at one point. It'll be easier to control. It'll be easier to uh, extend and modify, so... Um, you know, that, that could also uh, be a tip and, and be of help. But let's go back now and, and take a look and see if we have any more luck with this thing. So now we've, we've created this surface loft here at the bottom of the tree. We've got the surface loft. So let's click on that surface loft and do cut with surface. And look at that. Now 
it just worked no problem. So this is a good trick to remember, and, and I'm glad I got a chance to show this to you guys because I think you'll find a lot of places to use this. But the real lesson there is instead of creating the loft so that it is, uh, you know, it's, it's dependent on this surface being exactly in the right location and the loft is terminating right here. And if there's any, you know, minor surface deviation, things aren't going to work. And similarly, all along this curvature here, you know, that, that lofted surface needs to terminate along all this curvature here and needs to be absolutely perfect. Instead, what you can do is you could create a surface offset and give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. And it doesn't need to be a lot, but if you just give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, I think what you'll learn is that it gives you a lot more uh, freedom to create this geometry and, and you're going to be a lot less likely to run into those, uh, you know, surface loft failed due to... Uh, geometric inconsistency and, and again probably what that geometric inconsistency is is that the the surface loft you know in, in theory is matching exactly to this curvature but in reality it's it's probably like pulling in a little bit or or extending out beyond a little bit at times because of how the solvers work so that's a good little pro move to to remember um, and I'm just going to keep that surface in place and use it for the rest of the scalloping geometry that I'm going to be creating uh, on this bottom bottom section of the bass guitar what's up the emerger welcome welcome thank you for joining us today great to see you here thanks a lot for joining us all right guys uh don't forget you got we got our uh two tall toby shirts available if you guys want to buy a two tall toby shirt two tall toby.com slash merch i know there's several of you in the chat right now who already have one uh but if you're interested in the softest t-shirt ever uh, check out the twotalltoby.com slash merch shop. A great way to support the channel uh, and uh, you know keep this train rolling in 2023. All right, cool. Well, I'm pretty happy with that contour. Um, for sake of time, I will rename these sketches a little bit later. Uh, I'm not going to go through and rename them all right now, but I am going to go through and hide some of this geometry that we don't need anymore. Hide some of this curve and sketch geometry. And I should probably show the solid body again because I think we do need to see that. And let's go to correct bottom view and let's create that larger scalloped region. We got these nice planes that we can we can reuse here if we need them. Uh, I don't know if we're going to need them for this larger scalloped region, but let's take a look. So now let's this time I'm going to start on this uh, correct bottom view and I'm going to show this image from the bottom of the base and I'm going to sketch on this plane and just sketch a spline here that uh, we will use to carve out the rest of this thing. So like I said, I mean, there's a hard break right here for that uh, larger scalloped region. So I could probably do something like, I mean, really, I could probably just do something like this, just kind of create a, a two-point spline and then grab the handles of that spline and move them into place to get that scallop region. I think that's actually pretty, pretty good, uh, you know, good way to start this thing. Uh, maybe it makes sense to be at least a little inside of this contour region, but honestly, I don't think it really matters. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it, I'll, I'll put it right on the body here. Um, you know, kind of following the same workflows that we've been using. So we create this scalloped, loft profile here which is going to be right on the bass guitar body all right i think it looks good right on the bass guitar body i connected it to that surface offset that we created earlier connected to that surface offset that we created earlier so that's for that larger scalloped region right mouse button sketch color make that something that really pops so that i can easily see what that is and identify it and uh, then i'm going to go to this view from the side of that contouring region. So this, this sketch plane here, I'm going to show that image as well. I'm gonna get normal two on that side, and I'm going to create the uh, geometry for that larger scalloped out region, which looks like it probably starts, you know, I could start it on this plane. Uh, I kind of want it to be close to this, this point here where I started with that other curve. Uh, just because it it creates a little bit cleaner geometry if you if you follow that workflow, but uh, now you know from here it's going to just be a matter of matching up to that larger scallop region from that uh, image. And again, we can 
kind of do our best to line this up. Something like this. Let's think how we want to do this. I guess I could probably just drop it right on that point and then have it start to taper off. I just don't know if this is going to... Might be a little problematic. I think overall, though, I'm happy with this. Something like that. All right, let's see what it ends up looking like. So now we're going to take that and we're going to do curve, projected curve, and project that onto our surface it's kind of sticking out a little bit like so all right i like that and then we're going to go to lofted surface and we're going to loft from here to our projected curve we don't even need to make a 3d sketch or anything and now let's hide some of these images so that we can see what we're what we're really looking at here we can hide that curve that we created as well uh, within that loft so we can hide that curve and we can hide some of these extra sketches here. I don't think we need them. And we can hide this extra surface body that we created. And so you can see that we're, we're coming in with this additional surface here. And we're going to use that just to kind of scoop out that middle section to give us that extra uh, geometry from, the, uh, from what we saw in the image of the bass guitar. And we'll, then we can look at the physical bass guitar and see if that looks close to what we had. So we'll do cut with surface and we'll cut that geometry away and then hide this guy here. And that's pretty close. I think the hard edge up top is a little bit off. It's just slightly off. I just need to be a little bit more aggressive with, uh, with this contour here. But overall, it's pretty pretty close to what we're, we're seeing here where we've got this you know much more exaggerated contour and then it kind of comes in and blends down here so it would just be a matter of adjusting one of those profiles to get that geometry to match up a little bit more so let's see what we got here so maybe this profile here we would want to Take this point and make it a little more aggressive. I think I adjusted in the wrong direction, so I want it to be a little more aggressive in that direction. Yeah, that's much better. Remember, we can use our zoom previous. And you can see how you can use those spline handles to, you know, to adjust that shape to get it to be what the you know ultimately it's going to be what the the bass player finds to be comfortable um, because that's the area that your body is going to be it's, it's contoured out there to rest against your body so certainly we could use the images to try to get it close but at the end of the day it's going to be up to the bass player uh to say you know yeah that's that feels good or it, it's not quite right maybe you, nowadays you could probably even 3d print one of these bodies and just uh not not to string it up but just for sake of holding that um and seeing how it feels against your you know, against your body or against the bass player's body so let's go to correct bottom here and same thing here i would maybe want to adjust this so it's a little bit more in line uh, maybe continue adjusting this until it's in line up here let's see what we can do there and this one here Maybe just make that a little more aggressive and pull this point up. I don't want this to get too wrinkled here, so I'm trying to be conscious of that. Um, otherwise, the loft could start to become problematic. Yeah, see how we're getting closer and closer there and getting closer and closer there. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and what we're going to do here, I mentioned this uh, just a few moments ago, but what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to actually fill it this first before we start adding in these surface cuts. So I'm going to put the surface cuts down at the bottom and, and roll back before them. So a little off screen there, but I took the surface cuts and put them down here. 
uh, because we're going to inject a fillet right here after we have all of our lofted surfaces. So this is what I did in the video um, that I published before the new year just to show you guys kind of some advanced technique on uh, how to create some of this, this cut geometry. So we've got our surfaces here that we're going to use for our cuts. Let's continue on here. Uh, I'm going to call this body surface offset for bottom contours and let's continue on here now with some of these bottom contours uh, with that surface offset there uh, so we're gonna go to I'll call this uh, loft contour bottom side one control C control V and we'll call this one loft contour bottom side one large just so we know that's a different one which makes it a little easier for me to find these. All right, so let's go to our image of the uh, body here on the bottom. And then on that plane, I'm going to create the remaining uh, contours so that I can just kind of scallop them out in uh, a little bit of a faster workflow. So let's show our body offset here. And that way we can create our scallop sketch here uh, a little bit more closely related to that. So that one's going to go to about there and bring that over like so. This is what I would consider side two for these uh, contours. Just going to move this down just a little bit. I like this song. Good songs here in, uh, you know, whatever this is, season five or whatever we'll call it. We're just going to call it the base giveaway, live stream, free training, so many different names. Okay. So that's good, good uh, use of spline there. Right mouse button, sketch color, change that to something that really pops out, make it a little easier for me to select it. And then we're going to go to, um, We'll hide that image and we'll go to our image from side two. Show that. We'll go to our plane there on side two. We'll get normal two, that side two. And then we'll just create the scallop for that section as well. So this is going to be a spline that starts, you know, kind of up here near the top or even we could even go off of the top of the, the base. I guess it needs to be on top because it's going to be projected. So we'll do a spline here that's, that's going to end up getting projected and try to capture what that contour looks like peaks and valleys guys remember peaks and valleys is the trick to doing this kind of work peaks and valleys is is the trick okay so there's our spline looks pretty good uh, we could adjust maybe here a little bit i think actually what i want to do is just relocate that a little bit yeah and then i can start bringing that down to the final location. Okay, that looks acceptable. And we will exit that sketch and then um, curves, projected curve, and we'll project that onto this, you know, the, the, the surface uh, that we offset. Looks like I got a little bit extra there. Uh, so let me. I just want there to be a little bit of a gap um, so that, you know, I could, I can just pick the one curve. I don't have to pick them both. So there we go. That's what I wanted. That's perfect. And now we can do lofted surface, loft from this curve to this curve. And there we go. And then just as a sanity check, I might take that lofted surface and do a cut with surface. And just make sure that it doesn't have any problem cutting away the solid body, which it had no problem. There's that contour now created in that section of the bass guitar. I'm not going to keep that surface cut. Uh, I just wanted to do that as a sanity check. Let's move on now and create some of these other uh, scalloped areas of this bass guitar from the bottom. So image from the bottom, we'll show it. 
We'll go to that plane on the bottom. We'll create our curve here. This one kind of goes like, I'll create it from here. Kind of goes like this. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see, where do I want to stop this thing? Could stop it right here. I don't want to go too far into that neck area, so I think I'll I'll just stop it a little bit short of the neck area. And then we'll use our spline handles here to get this curve to more or less match. Use our spline handles here. It's got kind of a funky start in this section. I noticed that when I was doing the, the ones before the new year too. Alrighty, and then just because I already have the image shown, um, I'm going to do the other side too. So I'll go sketch color, make that one like a green. I don't like that lump. I know that they, these are going to be projected, so it won't be as noticeable, but there's just something about that I don't like. And then I'm going to go to that same surface. So uh, here we go, or same sketch plane. And then I'm going to create the other geometry here for that other scallop area. So just kind of the same process. Start here kind of close to the where that neck pocket is. End up up here. Like so. All right. I'm pretty happy with that and we'll go right mouse button sketch color and make that something a different color and now we just need to go to our uh image from the top looking down so that's going to be this one here from the neck and then we can go to that new sketch plane that we created earlier in the in the design for the uh for the other you know, the other curves that we created. Oh, actually, sorry, not that one. Uh, this one. Yeah, that's good. Or we can just make a new one too. I mean, either way. Just do one here like this. I'm sure that I have one for the, from when I did the other side, but. Alrighty, and now we can use our spline and use our uh, the, the, the body of the bass guitar here and the images and just kind of try to get close to what that scalloping looks like. You know, try to... match this as best you can. You might not even need a three-point spline. You might be able to do it with just a two-point spline. But, you know, the less points you have, the less wrinkling you're going to end up getting, so... It's always uh, good if you can do it with less. And then we're going to go uh, curve, project curve, and project that onto this surface, like so. And then loft. Wow, it's really far off. I didn't think it was going to be that far off. Hold on, let's see what we can do about that point. I think maybe I related it to... I want to relate it to this point. There we go. There we go. Much better. And then we can do our surface loft. So lofted surface from here to here. And we'll use that to cut in just a moment. And then same thing on the other side. So select face, begin to sketch, orient the view. Again, we can probably do this with just a two-point spline. that oops something like that and then we can take that two point spine and grab these handles and manipulate this until it kind of matches the contour and then we can project and curve that so curves projected onto this surface reverse direction there we go and loft lofted surface from here to here a 
Okay. The uh, loft connector was not going point to point the way I was hoping it would. But that took care of that. And so now we can start cutting this thing with those lofts. But what I think we should do first is what we did on the top side, which is we should start with a fillet here. Uh, just running around the entire top of the, the guitar, the entire bottom of the guitar. So that now we've, we're starting out with this kind of nice filleted region, and then we can start surface cutting. Uh, so we already did that with our first surface cut here, so to give us that kind of larger contour on the bottom. And then we did our second surface cut to give us that secondary surface cut on the bottom. Now we can come over here to this surface. You can pick on the surface from the graphics area, and then do cut with surface. So now that let us scallop out that region that was on the side there. That's looking pretty good. Let's get rid of this uh, this curve here. These curves sometimes are hard to, to track down where exactly they're located. They get embedded in the uh, in the feature. Okay, that's good. You got them all? Okay, yeah. And so then we can take this surface here and we can do a cut with surface and reverse direction. There we go. And we'll hide that surface. And then we can take this surface here and do a cut with surface. And there we go. And then we can hide that. And then we can finish this thing up by just going around and reapplying filleting in uh, the, the regions that we just cut away. So we could do another fillet here, uh, maybe on this face. And this is very similar to what I did in that video. So we could maybe do it on these uh, these two outside scalloped regions, fillet those off. Oh yeah, look at that. That's like uh, almost exactly what the physical model looks like. Uh, and then we could do another fillet here and here to kind of finish that off. And wow. That looks great. So we were able to fill it. You know, we were able to, to create that model. We were able to create the larger scallop here where your body would rest against the, the guitar. And we were able to create these other scallops. Very similar to what we did last year. Uh, but uh, we needed to do it both on the top and the bottom of this guitar. It, it's scalloped on both the top and the bottom uh, to make it more comfortable to play. And so, you know, we needed to make sure that we did it on both. Now, if we wanted, you know, certain fillet regions to be a little bit larger than others, one thing that's kind of cool um, that sometimes is overlooked is if you do the fillet command and you pick the face fillet option, what the face fillet option will let you do is it'll let you jump a gap. Uh, so let's say we wanted that to be one inch in that region there. Even though that region's already filleted, you know, like if we just tried to apply a regular fillet there, SolidWorks would say you can't fillet it because those faces are already tangent. But if we did a face fillet, the face fillet will actually jump that gap and let us create that larger fillet in that region. So if we were looking at this thing and we were like, man, it looks good except for that one single face there, you know, you could maybe get away with doing a delete face and then adding a fillet. But another way you could do it maybe would be to do a, a face fillet option. So I'm gonna check this into the vault here because uh, now we are on revision nine. So we can check that in. Um, one thing that's kind of cool about having a vault is you can always go back to an earlier version. So you get kind of a, a true snapshotting of the process. Um, so you can see here version one, version two, version three, version four, version five, version six, version seven, version eight, and now version nine where we added those uh, extra fillets on the bottom. We've got every single version in there. At any point, we could grab one of those earlier versions and work on it. And so I guess just because I uh, really wanted to, uh, to to progress to the, the point of creating those the pocket on the bottom, I am going to do one final sketch here, one final feature, and that is going to be to start to create the cavity for the electronics. So, you know, when you've got your geometry, uh, when you're working from images, it's really helpful. Uh, it can really help you save time because you can you can get in there and you can start uh, creating your geometry, you know, uh, from that image and just working from that image. So we could get in here now. We could start creating some sketch geometry, you know, creating sketch with fillet. Uh, I'm using the line command and then I'm coming back, touching the endpoint, coming around, creating a line with fillets there. And we can use that to, you know, get this geometry looking kind of close to what the 
um, physical model looks like just by dragging really like you can see how quickly I was able to get in there and just create that pocket and after the fact I could certainly go in and add some dimensions uh, to you know to, to, to kind of lock this thing down maybe make these two sections here equal and I could also use physical dimensions and measurements to figure out where certain you know key features are located like I could um, take care to dimension the whole pattern here because the the plate that goes over this electronics cavity is gonna you know is gonna need to match that whole pattern another trick that I'll often use in this scenario is the fix command so I might take this line here and just say fix and it just makes that line black and you know everything can still move here and, and now I could get in and start locking in some uh, some other dimensions uh, but it just kind of makes it easy for you to uh, keep things in place when you're working from an image so you know that's another little kind of cool trick that you can use is you can use the the fix command to start to lock things down and, and that way you can really manipulate this image and get things uh get things looking the way you need them to look here's another spot where i could take a physical dimension so i could take uh, my physical caliper here and uh you know just measure that cavity fr from the the point of max tangency or uh, as best as i can see it here point of max tangency and uh I got 3.63, so in the image I'm going, getting 3.575, so I would need to, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting 3.601, so I was getting 3.63 in the physical, you know, and then I could go in and I can adjust accordingly. It's actually pretty close there either way, working from an image, so that's pretty good. Um, similarly, I could maybe measure from this arc to this arc uh, for tangent, tangent, Give me the max distance across tangent 7.132 well unfortunately my caliper doesn't go up that big so i'm not gonna be able to measure that one but uh uh i can measure the depth of that section of the pocket and it looks like the depth of that section of the pocket is about 75 thou so s key extrude cut 0.075 and boom that gives me the pocket there for the uh for the electronics ca uh, cavity and now i could begin a sketch down in that pocket and then show that image again and then use that image to uh create this very odd shape here you know there's this very odd shape here that that was you know pretty obvious that was just milled in there uh, to follow a path but it's a very odd shape it'd be you know very difficult to measure that and to figure out what that's actually uh supposed to be but you know because we have the image here we could just trace over this and odds are that this radius is going to be pretty consistent uh looks like it's maybe a one even a one inch radius there and so once we figure out what that radius is we, it should be pretty easy for us to just keep using that radius but even if it is different you know we can you can see here that this is much easier than uh maybe uh having to take measurements off of this thing you can really get through here quickly if you learn how to use the line arc line functionality in SolidWorks and you can get in here and create this kind of odd shaped pocket without too much stress uh, we can get in there and add some measurements to make sure that it's it's more or less the correct size but you know again it, it depends on what you're doing like in this kind of fictional scenario what I'm doing is I'm using an existing product to help inspire me to create my own product maybe I'm going to create a custom bass guitar and so it doesn't have to be perfect you know matching up with this now if you were creating some type of uh, aftermarket part for this bass guitar yeah then you need to be a little bit more aware of what you're doing and, and get your geometry a little more perfect but if you're just looking for inspiration and now you're gonna you know you're gonna create your own uh, this is a great way to start 1.47 deep for that pocket. So we'll go here, extrude cut, 1.47. And we now have ourselves an electronics enclosure, uh, which makes me very happy. Uh, I was hoping to get to the point where we had that uh, geometry. Now, I'm gonna show you guys one last thing here before we go today, just because uh, I think this is a, a cool technique that you can use. And you can either do this as a separate part or you could do it all in the same part of the base body. But the last technique I'm gonna show you is a technique that I use for paint, because this thing is wood. Uh, it's all made of wood and then it's it's uh, painted with this red. And then it's, uh, you know, it looks like it's some kind of gloss that they put over top of that as well. Well. 
One thing that I think looks really cool, a really cool uh, technique that you can use to emulate this is we could go to our material here and we could say that we're going to make this out of some kind of wood. Um, we'll say it's uh, just a beech wood for now. All right, so there you go. There you can see you've got that wood green. Um, and we could certainly, you know, we could certainly get a different type of wood grain here to make this look a little more realistic. But then we can use that command that I mentioned to you earlier, which is the um, surfaces offset surface. And let's say we just offset a surface by like five thou, a very small amount. Well, we could do a right mouse button here and say select tangency. And that basically grabs all of the exposed... Uh, kind of finished wood. The only thing that was missing was this section here, which maybe uh, this would also warrant some filleting uh, to make that section smooth. It's not going to have a hard edge or anything. It is going to be filleted as well. So let me just add that. So I'll go fill it here and I'll say I want this to be a little bit smaller, say 60 thou. Maybe I'd go a little larger than that too, but that's fine. Okay. Now I'm going to go surface. Uh, sorry, offset surface, uh, right mouse button, select tangency. That gets every surface that's on there. I'm going to offset that by uh, 0 0.005. So just 5 thou offset for that surface. Okay. And now I'm going to take that surface body that I just created. And I'm going to use that surface body with a command called thicken. And I'll make that 10 thou. So that 10 thou is going to represent the thickness of the paint itself. So I'm making this uh, a 10 thou thick. Uh, surface surface thick in here, 10 thou thick paint, and don't merge the result, so it's a separate body. Let's see if we might need to go a little smaller. Oh, unable to thicken surface, huh? It's going to be a pain. Um, okay, what we could do here is we could reverse the direction. That should let us do it. Okay, good. And then with that surface, uh, with that now solid body, because we thickened it into a solid body, we could go here to um, something like paint. Here's the car paint for the candy apple red. And we could say we want to apply that to just that body. And you can see it's kind of cool, the result, the effect that you get from this. Now, um, I think what I would do here is because I had to thicken the other way, I would actually make this 0 0.010, so 10 thou offset for the original surface, and then I thickened it 0 0.005. But look at how cool that looks. And now it looks like this was painted and then machined uh, to, to, to create the cavity for the neck there and machined here in the back to create the cavity for the electronics. Then there's also going to be some machining in the middle here for the, uh, um, uh, you know, for the pickup and for the electronics holes for the potentiometer and that switch. But I just think it's really a cool technique that you can use to uh, kind of emulate the uh, the process of machining this thing. You know, on the underside here, if we were to go to the bottom here, there's going to be... Like I said, there's going to be a couple of holes here for the um, electronics controls. So I'll just extrude cut that. And then there's going to be a pocket here in the middle for the pickup. And I'm just doing this to illustrate kind of what this will end up looking like because I think it's really cool how it'll look. Uh, so we'll say that's going to go down half an inch. So now you see we no longer have a tangent edge there. We no longer have a tangent edge there. So that means when we offset that surface and then thicken it, that tangent edge is not going to be included. And it just further adds to the effect of this being painted and then machined. Uh, and so, of course, the machining is not going to pick up on the paint. And you're going to end up with these really cool wooden cavities. So just kind of a cool technique that you can use. You can do that at the part level. You could do that at the assembly level uh, where, you know, you uh, uh, actually create the paint as its own individual component, or you can do it at the part level, uh, kind of like what we did here. And just because I am a stickler for uh, making this look right before I uh, check this in, I'm going to show this image here and just kind of get it a little bit closer to what it should be. Not perfect, but it makes me feel a little bit better when it looks at least a little bit closer to, to what it should be. And similarly, I'm going to grab the electronics holes that I put in there and just kind of move them a little bit closer to where they should be. There we go. 
All right, and then I'm going to hide that image, and let's save this. Let's check it in as Rev10, and then let's go to our assembly and admire our work. Look at how awesome this thing is looking now. That's looking like a bass guitar. I got to say, that is definitely looking like a bass guitar. And so we can... Make this thing look really good. Give it some perspective. Look at that thing. That looks awesome. All right. And we can check in the whole thing. Check in active document. And update everything to the latest versions. And I think that's probably a good place to stop today. So hope you guys enjoyed that session. I think we got a lot done. We got everything done that I wanted to get done. We got the uh, new scalloping down on the sides here. We got the pocket uh, for the electronics on the back. It's going to take a little bit of refinement, that pocket on the back. We'll do some measuring. Uh, maybe I'll do some of that offline. We need to get these electronics out of here so that we can uh, uh, start um, creating some of the final cavities here and we can get a clear shot of what these final cavities are. So I'll desolder this. Uh, uh, maybe I'll work on it tonight. I'll desolder it uh, offline. I'm going to have to pull this bridge off of here. That's this part here. I'm going to have to pull this pickup out of here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to draw up the guts for the pickup. I'm just going to, because you can buy this all as one unit. I don't think we need to go to the, pro, the, the point of drawing up the guts. I don't know. Maybe I will. We'll see how I'm feeling. Um, but we got to draw in the bridge. We got to talk a little bit about hardware and how to take toolbox hardware and divorce it from toolbox. So it's no longer related to toolbox. Uh, we got to talk about the output jack over here. Uh, we got to talk about, you know, some of the electronics that are in here too. So we got a lot of fun stuff to, to work on the rest of this week, but I'm really happy with how this thing is looking. I'm really happy with what we did with the, the contouring today. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, buy a t-shirt. Uh, you can support with super thanks or super chat. And I want to say thank you guys so much. It's great to be back. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, hopefully everything is sounding and looking good. I'm feeling really happy with how the mic is sounding, with how the music's sounding, with everything. I'm really happy with everything. Happy to be in 2023. So thank you guys so much. See you guys tomorrow.